In this video, I'm going to be teaching you the best way to utilize your zone drops in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is simply about how you could become a better Madden player. And so if you're looking to become better at this game, as I am also looking to become better at this game, I would highly encourage you to join our community here. It's very simple and it's free to be a part of this community. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And one other thing that I'd like to ask you to do if you're looking to get more involved with the, with the YouTube channel is I would like to ask you to go ahead and text me. Uh, my number is in the top left hand corner of your screen and by texting me what it allows, um, I'll, obviously it's my personal cell phone number and what it allows us to do, not only is it allows us to connect, but it also allows me to be able to send you a copy of my text membership playlist. And the reason that that is so important is because Every single week, I sit down for about an hour and I break down something super, super in depth in the game. Something that, you know, whether it be a defensive scheme, an offensive scheme, a concept, a user catch, whatever it might be. And so, if you're looking for some of the super, super advanced stuff, that is a great place to start. And so far, we have, I think, about 15 videos in that playlist right now that have showcased some of the best schemes. Um, in the Madden community, we've covered the U trips, the bunch tight end, the ace slot offset, the split close, the bunch, the trips tight end, the big nickel over G, the three three five wide, the nickel, um, or I'm sorry, the the we'll, we will be sh showcasing the double A gap shortly. So the reason that I'm saying all this is to simply say to you. It's a free resource for you, so it would be a waste not to be able to pick that up. So literally all you have to do to pick that up is just text me. My cell phone number is 812-216-3644. Okay, guys, so in today's video, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is kind of a, a, a little bit of a working defensive strategy that you can use to make it essentially a bend but don't break style approach to defense, utilizing zone drops and allowing you to kind of understand some different tinkering that you can do with it based on your opponent's tendencies, okay? So this is 100% based on tendencies. It's 100% based on, you know, kind of what they're trying to accomplish. And so the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to go over a couple of different routes with you, and I want to specifically talk about how to do this out of the 335 wide cover four show two. You could also use the same principles out of the cover four drop from the 335 normal okay um, now I do have a complete defensive ebook on both the 335 and the 335 wide defense so if you want to get the full expanded version of this defense exactly how you need to run it with all the setups all the blitzes and coverages and everything in the run defenses that is all in the defensive ebook which you can find in the description of this video but today I just want to cover one little piece of it, and that is the, the, the cover four defense. So first and foremost, I want you to kind of recognize that really my base approach to defense this year is to basically play two different coverages depending on the side of the field and where I think they're going to attack. So for example, um, what I like to do is I actually like to play cover four to the short side because I think that's where there's going to be a lot of curl routes and a lot of crossing. And then I like to play cover two to the wide side of the field. Now, um, you could go back and forth with this. There's definitely reasons to play cover four to the wide side and cover two to the short side. But essentially, it's kind of using cover four and cover two kind of hand in hand to build your defense. And so uh, what that would look like is out of a cover four, you can basically create um, anything that you want. It's a very adaptable coverage. Um, this, in particular, uh, defense has matching principles, and it's not as hard to change the zones as you might think. And so, what I'm getting at here is, for example, if I was facing with, if I was facing this kind of offense, one of the things that I probably would do right off the bat um, is I have my flats set to 25, I have my curl flat set to 10, and I have my hook curl set to 5. And one of the things that I like to do right off the rip here is I would probably go ahead and put a cloud flat on the left side, a seam flat on the right side, and then some type of yellow zone on that left side as well. So maybe that's a, maybe that's a bluff blitz, right? Maybe it's a vert hook. Um, you can do anything that you want. But essentially you have 
these four zones here and the reason that this is so good against compression is because whenever you're in a cover whenever you're in this in particular type of situation where you're you're having to make this decision if they use some motion out strategies and things like that to try to get these receivers free up the seams what you're going to see is they're not going to be able to get up vertical because they're in a compressed type of set now this is completely different to the way that I might do defend uh, something like the gun doubles, right? So, and really when, you, when you're when you starting to put your defensive scheme together, it's really important to ask yourself, like what are the problem routes? What are the problem receivers? What are the problem routes that they can use to really get me? So for example, the cover four defense does a really, really good job against five wide or four wide or doubles because of what you're about to see so if you take a look at this here they have a spread wide receivers right all the receivers are spread out and so you wouldn't necessarily want to play um, this outside left receiver in a flat zone but because his outside quarter zone is going to be able to jump things like corner routes and C routes and curl routes and some of that stuff, you can leave these quarters out here. And now effectively, now you've got to ask yourself the simple question of who who is going to go on a crossing route? Like if somebody was going to go on a crossing route, where would they be? Well, then that's where you can kind of start to piece together. Maybe you're going to run a cover two to the right side and a cover four to the left side. So it will look something like this right here. And then now you have your three rec from this defensive end. And then now that leaves this other uh, player here, Square, uh, Amos. You can man him up on the crossing route. And you can basically adjust out of this to really make it difficult for people to consistently move um to to consistently move up and down the field against your against your against your uh your defense you see here that you know these zones because they're at 10 yard depth you see they jump and and this is why i really like seam flats these are the only zones in the entire game that i have found that do a really really good job against a lot of different things including the curl routes 10 yard curl flats when you turn those into the seam flats um, so you see here, I'm hot routing them to seam flats. They're they're actually um, technically quarter flats. If you look at them right there, they're technically quarter flats. If you use seam flats, they're going to play a lot different, um, even though they're still dropped at a 10 yard depth. And what I mean by a lot different is you're going to see, let's say that they do something like this on this left side. Well, if you were using that same strategy that I was telling you um, earlier, so let's say you use this this kind of defense right here, right? These are all adjustments that you're just making. Well, now if you watch here, now watch this 10-yard flat. See how he sits right on the curl route? Now I know that the flat route was open, but most people don't want to throw the flat route, right? They want to throw the curl route. So those are just some strategies that you can employ. And then as the game goes on and as the game develops, one of the other things that I like to tell people is I think it actually makes a lot of sense to take these two and put them on default and simply start with 25 yard flat zones why because you still have that zone that if you needed to stop like a crossing route or a corner route or something like that you can still do that but what you've now added is some flexibility in terms of how these zones are going to play for example let's say that they come out in something like a trips tight end um, type of set and now what you'll notice is when you audible down into that cover four and you create those uh, seam flats on the outside if you take a look at kind of how this is going to play you'll see that these seam flats play a lot differently they kind of play a little bit more in my opinion glitchier and they kind of match the situation so for example let's say that you let's say that you call um let's say that you call cover four right and on this like in this situation is a really really good example so instead of running um you don't really there's really no reason um to not run cover two to the left side so what we're going to do is we're going to basically run a cover two style defense to the left side and we're going to run a cover four style defense as you can see over here to the right side now with this we don't really need a um a flat zone because we have that outside quarter to be able to play stuff but what we could use is a three rec so what we're going to do is essentially we're always going to shift our defensive line this direction, but now we can essentially create two different defenses. As you can see right here, we can drop the vertical hook and we can drop the three rec. And now we have a little bit more middle of the field coverage. And if we pass commit, you're going to see that these yellow zones and all of these things are going to play a lot better. In fact, if you take a look at this wheel route here, you're going to see that they're going to basically be able to take that away completely because they're not dropping to a specific depth 
like they were whenever you were saying 25 yards, 10 yards, and zero and five yards. Now, that's not to say you can't do that and you can't get a similar type of strategy. But this type of strategy, in my opinion, essentially to the short side, I think it makes a lot of sense to run some type of cover uh, two style of defense because you're going to see a lot of people like to run um, crossing routes from the wide side of the field to the short side of the field, especially if they're in a three-by-one set like a trip side in or a gun bunch. And then what you're going to notice here is then from that point, once we have that taken care of, um, let me give you another example, something like a corner route. Let me see if I can find – let me see if I have a corner route in here. I might not. Oh, I do from tight end corner. So if you see here, now we're in tight end corner. You see we've got our, our – our, um, our cover two to the to the wide side, and then we have our cover um, our our cover four to the left side here. And I just want you to watch how this does a decent job. It doesn't always stop it, but it does do a decent job of corner routes. You see that the corners are in the area, and they're basically in a position where they might be able to make a play. That is what I'm talking about whenever I say cover two to one side of the field or the other side of the field. Typically, a corner route is going to come from the slot receiver in a formation. So let me see if I can find one out of this trio. But, for example, out of trip side in, the trip side in corner route is the one that is, in my opinion, a little bit harder to stop because you can basically flood the zone. You could run an outside streak, um, and the, the, the offense has to account for that. So um, let me take a look here, and we'll play something maybe even as simple as the play flood here. Um, and I'm just going to show you this. So this is like strong flood. And again, we talked about running that cover two style defense to the short side and then running the cover four to the wide side. So you'll see here something like this. And then we're doing these adjustments are kind of our basic adjustments. And then from there, what we have to do is we have to say, who's the person that is probably going to go in the corner route? In this example, it's going to be the left side slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to man him up. Um, with the with the linebacker and then essentially we're going to play you know that three reg zone either from the left or the right I personally like to do it on the running back side I just think it helps a little bit but you can do it from either side and what you're going to see now is that this out route these 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 flood concepts are now being given a little bit more of a tough time obviously the flat route was open in that situation but the scene flat does a good job of being able to kind of navigate in between those two things. So anyways, that's a little bit about kind of a base coverage that I think a lot of people, if they would really understand what I'm talking about with this stuff, could really help. Essentially what I'm getting at here um, is I think against spread offenses, that means like trips, that's, that's basically not compression. Okay, it's like the opposite. So like this trio would be an example of a spread offense. But what you're going to do is you're going to run, run cover um, four to the wide side of the field. Okay, so to the to the wide side of the field, you're going to run cover four. And then to the short side of the field, you're going to run cover two, as you can see right there. Now, let's say that you face a compression set. Well, that's going to mean one, other adju one additional adjustment that I think is going to really actually make a big difference for your defense. So let's say that they're running a compression set and the, th the, the trips are typically going to be to the wide side of the field for them to be able to run these flood concepts and things like that. You're just going to make one, other ad one additional adjustment because when you are facing a compression set, especially like a bunch or a tight, a bunch tight end, a, a tight double, something like that, you don't have to have this outside, um, this outside quarter. What you can do is you can turn that into a cloud flat zone. And now what you're going to see is even if they motion this guy out, even if they do some stuff, now you're going to see. Look at the look at the coverage. There's nowhere to throw this corner out. Completely take it away. Obviously, if they aggressive catch it, that's one thing. But now now you've put yourself in a really, really good position defensively. So this is a simple strategy that you can use that I like to use also to kind of just base out of a cover for shell and essentially adjust. Um, this is this is one of the easiest strategies, in my opinion, defensively. Now, could you do a similar concept? Let me show you another play really, really, really quickly here. Um, and what you'll notice is that typically when someone runs the trips, uh, whenever you have auto flip on and someone is running something like a trips formation, then typically it's going to auto flip to the side of the trips out of this. So just kind of imagine that for just a second. But if you take a look at the 335 normal formation, this is essentially the play cover three cloud. As you see here, um, I can just come out in this defense. And then from here, you see it's kind of created exactly what I wanted to create. The only difference is instead of an outside half, 
it is now an outside third zone. So that's just something that you might want to, you might want an outside third, you might not want an outside third, but that's just something you need to know. And then as you can see here, if we wanted to, we could create that same element from that cover four, as you can see right there. Now we're kind of in that same little, um, you know, same little thing in that slot streak um, is no longer uh, available. As you see, he's going to be able to take him over the top and essentially take that away. So that's how you can get really, really adjusty out of your cover four. There's obviously a lot more to it, and we go into specifics and a little bit more detail and just to give you a lot more setups and things to think about in our defensive ebook. So this is just a preview to that, but hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you thought this was good and you have not gotten the defensive guide yet, I really want to encourage you to consider doing that. That is just simply $15 for the entire defense. It shows you from head to toe how to literally stop a almost any and everything that the offense can throw your way um, with one simple defensive formation. I think it's a phenomenal ebook. Um, it's probably uh, my best work so far this year in terms of just how simple and easy to use it is. We've been able to take people who couldn't stop a nosebleed and now they are consistently getting pick sixes and their, their user is improving. They're able to stop the run. They're able to win way more games in weekend league as a result. And so if you're looking to get better on the defensive side of the ball, go ahead and hit up that ebook that link is in the description and real quick we do have a free sample just for those people who have texted in so if you want to text in to get that free sample my cell phone number is 812-216-3644 i want to thank you for watching this video and i just want to encourage you if you've been sitting on the fence for getting the ebook the link to getting that defensive guide is in the description